previously on Night Ventures. Like, oh, it's because we're cute. You know, like, that's why. <laughs> Be you. Be you. On this final segment of this conversation with Jules, we're going to talk about money, taxes, and property. So Jules, mm -hmm. what is the best location to live here? Wait, 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 wait. Before we let Jules answer this question, I want to clarify one thing. First, I want to say welcome back to all returning viewers. And if you're new to the channel, please kindly subscribe. The whole time I was in Reykjavik, I didn't see any fast food. And when I asked for them, Everybody was telling me that Iceland did not have any fast food restaurants. It's not entirely true. And it's not like I was really looking for them. But as you travel, the American fast food industry is hard to miss. You see them in Paris. You see them in London. You see them everywhere you go. But Reykjavik was very different. I didn't see a single one. Does Iceland really not have any good, healthy American fast food? I really thought that was the case. I thought Iceland somehow didn't have a single one, which is not entirely true. To make it clear, there are no McDonald's in Iceland. Not at all, not a single one. They do, however, have Subway, KFC, and Taco Bell. And when I found that out, I was devastated. So thanks to all the Icelandic people that I met and lied to me, about Iceland not having any good old American fast food. They lied to us, man. They told us there's no fast food in Iceland. That wasn't true. We have KFC. We picked up some fries. We got this chicken, Pepsi. They got all this shit over here. So if you come to Iceland, man, and you want to freaking have some freaking fast food, you can. Oh yeah, we had a driver take us straight to the KFC drive-thru. Then we had some gin tasting and afterwards we cheers to some chicken wing. Cheers to Iceland <laughs> KFC. Boom. Take in. All right. Lesson learned. Don't believe everything you hear. Now let's get back to the final part of my interview with Jules. Oh, that's a hard question. Okay, it depends on preference. Okay. I live on Selternes, which is a peninsula of Reykjavik area and I think it's the best place <laughs> because <laughs> it's not too far into the city but also we have views of the mountains and so this view here that you see that's like Asia mountain the sea we have a view like that from our apartments yes. and I'm just like this is amazing I don't know you know it's, it doesn't get any better but like some people if they really want the action living downtown 101 uh, would be maybe you know your your best bet. So I think it depends on preference. I don't okay. want to say it's the best because people are gonna be like that's not it. Yes, <laughs> yeah, but yes. for me, I think a little bit out of the city is nice with views. Right. So one bedroom, one bathroom downtown, roughly. <laughs> how much are we looking at? Ooh. Here? Okay. In the one on one uh, area. Yes. For rent or to buy? Uh, for rent. For rent, it would easily be like two hundred thousand Icelandic, um, which could be I don't know one hundred. Mm, no, $1,500, maybe? 500 a month? Uh, no, uh, 1500 Yeah, it could okay. be something around this. So very similar to like Washington, D.C. Yeah, area. yeah. It's like, it, it, I feel like Iceland is trying to be like big cities in New yeah, York yeah. in that way. Like the, the prices for things have really like gone up a lot. Wow, okay. Yeah. And do most people buy or rent? Okay, so it depends on the... the <laughs> I think it's an interesting thing too, right? Because a lot of foreign nationals feel like they're stuck in this cycle where they can't buy because they might not make enough, but they pay a lot in rent, yes. way more rent than they would ever pay in mortgage, wow. right? So it's like really, and I feel like this is a problem you find in like big urban cities yes, where it's like yes. I pay a ton in um, rent, but I could afford a mortgage if only the bank would give me the approval. Of course. A lot of Icelanders, most of the time what happens is their parents are the ones who are giving them the initial amount yes. to invest in buying a place because mm -hmm. they expect you to put down like 15 to 20 percent of the cost of the place as the down payment Payments. before you can go forward sure. with the process and of course getting approval from the bank if you need that. Mm -hmm. So it can be a, a process where a lot of Icelanders own and not as many foreign nationals own or people who are living here from foreign countries because of this barrier to entry. Yeah. And it's easy to fall in love with um, 
the schedules here. I heard you have a short week and a long week. Like, I can't figure um, out, like, how does that work? Okay, so there's been this interesting news kind of um, storm around Iceland when it comes to short weeks. It's not really that short of a week, to be honest. Okay, <laughs> so okay. It might be shorter by, like, you know, an hour or something like that. Okay. Meaning, overall, you do get a shorter period of time, but it's for, they started out with city workers mm. and then maybe some companies have taken it on, but it's yes. not everywhere in Iceland where yes. people have shorter work weeks. Okay. It is, it's like a rolled out thing that's like you can, okay, we tested it out and maybe we want to keep going with it, but it amounts to, you know, more like hours than, uh, than days. days. Okay. You know, it could overall accumulate in the month to like a day, Yeah. but or a couple of days, yes. but it's not as extreme as people think. People yeah. are not just working four hour, four days yes. a week, every week. Yes. No. <laughs> and the free healthcare and free college comes with the high taxes. Yes. So do you feel a difference on your income from living here, which is higher taxes to like New York? I do as an entrepreneur <laughs> because okay. I pay a lot more taxes as an entrepreneur. Okay. But when I was in a corporation, I didn't. So I, when someone else was taking care of all of those other taxes, that was amazing, mm -hmm. actually. <laughs> but and my, even though it feels like you're getting paid less, I have a higher standard of living. So when I go mm. to the doctor, for instance, yes. it is not 100% free, but they sub heavily subsidize it. So everybody who lives here has health care period in the story like meaning once you've been here six months or, or more yeah and the fascinating thing to me is that i went to the doctor what was it last year for something and they had lowered the price of going to the doctor yeah. and i was like i've never heard of that <laughs> right like i've never heard that it went from like ten dollars to five dollars yes. like that's just unusual and i mean i'm not even joking in terms of prices yeah i've paid probably around like five dollars to see the doctor like it's not an expensive thing and I'm not saying that nothing can be expensive regarding uh, healthcare in Iceland, but if you're pregnant, like they pay for all of these things regarding like having the baby and whatever else. Yeah. Whereas in the U.S., you can go bankrupt having a child. Absolutely. Yeah. So it's when you compare it in these ways, yeah. right? Like, yeah, the high taxes for me are totally worth it. The schools uh, and also university. There's a university you do have to pay for if you choose to. Yeah. But Household Islands, which is the University of Iceland. Mm -hmm. You pay a registration fee. That's it. It's That's like it. maybe six hundred dollars or something. Yeah. And of course, you have to pay for your books. But when I went to school, for instance, the university I went to was a private university, and it was over forty thousand at the time mm -hmm. per year, mm -hmm. right? So it's like. I'll take a registration fee, right? Like, that's yes. doable, in yes. my opinion. And, of course, like, living and stuff. But a lot of people live with their parents or they have to find some way to make it work if they're mm -hmm. foreign. Mm -hmm. so. Sounds good. Well, thank you so much for your time today. Yeah, thank problem. you. So, guys, if you have not checked our channel out, it's called All Things Iceland. Please mm -hmm. check it out. You know, give it a subscribe, like. Thanks for watching today. Any final words for someone who's watching who's never been here? Well... First of all, thank you for having me. Of course. And if you're going to come to Iceland, make sure that you're prepared clothing-wise. This is one of the things that probably gets most people. <laughs> Rent a car. Rent a car. If you, if you like to wow. do things at your own pace, I feel like that would really be beneficial. And also try different seasons. So in Iceland, the Northern Lights, you can only see those during the wintertime. You cannot see them during the summertime. You have 24-hour brightness as so you have. Oh, wow. It's tough. <laughs> Bring an eye mask, right? <laughs> if, you, if you follow me, there's a... Um, a list that I made for the different seasons for packing mm -hmm. and one of them has an eye mask oh, yeah, <laughs> for, yeah, yeah, for a summer time yes. because it is really crucial that there's certain things you need in Iceland depending on the year but I hope you all just decide to give Iceland a chance if you've never thought about it before and if you are thinking of coming it's totally worth it. Right. Thank you. Thank you.